everyone, it's Fiction Crypto and Michael Lee XRP. And today we are going to be covering the Q4 Ripple Report and we're going to be doing a price prediction on XRP. So let's see where, where we are in this market. We have Mike here today. He's going to go over this chart and I'm also going to give my uh, analysis as well. Yes, sir. Okay, as we can see, we have uh, some demand that's built up right here. Um, and then we have the original demand zone right here at 55 cents. So right now we're just waiting on, you know, a break of structure, an indication of where this is headed. Um, we have some liquidity built up at 65 cents. And then, of course, as I mentioned, we have that demand zone right here. At around 59 cents. So upon a break of structure right here at 59 cent, that would indicate that price is going to continue to go lower. So that is the bearish indication I'm looking for. And as far as the bullish indication, I would be looking for the 65 cent area to get swept. This liquidity right here. So upon the top side liquidity getting taken, we can expect price to go higher to create liquidity and return to original breaks of structure around 72 cent. And then for the bearish indication, we're looking at the demand zone at 59 cent getting swept. And well, what I like to do, me personally, I like to start with a top down analysis. So let's go to the uh, weekly chart and let's see an overview of this whole chart, what it's been doing for the last couple of uh, weeks and months. You know, uh, can you, yeah, give me a, there we go. So you see this pattern right here, you know, we in the market have been bearish since actually September. So, you know, we've been staying course with um, our sentiment in this market. We know things aren't magical and these charts print out, uh, spots and points on this chart where you know liquidity is it and where it's going to go so right now i can't tell my viewers that we're going to go to you know ten dollars of xrp but in the long run if mike puts a fibonacci on from the highest point right here on this chart uh, to the current price we can you know we can kind of see where we can go in the future so Mike, go ahead and draw us up a fib uh, real quick from the all-time high with a $2 price point over there um, uh, to the current price. Uh, you got a custom fib. Yeah, put the regular extensions on real quick so the viewers can see. Uh, like a, you got 168 on there? You got, I'll you got, have to add it. Yeah, you got custom levels. So what I want you to do real quick, uh, just put the 168 on there for me. Um, I just uh, want you to do a fib from the, the $2 price point into the current price, not what you just did. I don't know what you just did. You went from the bottom to the top. I don't, I need, I need you to go from current price. Uh, you got the fib the wrong way. I need you to drag it down from the top to the bottom. Thank you. And we're going to look at that one or to the current price, bro. Let's take it to the current price. All right. That's close enough, I guess. But uh, we're going to scroll up. There we go. You want to keep scrolling up because we got the 168 to look at. There we go. So in the thick of things, you see this pattern being formed it's getting some nice support on that bottom level right there where the act where actually where our fib is is a, a real heavy liquidity zone around 50 to 60 cents for xrp so we are looking at you know potentially a two dollar and 87 cent xrp a three dollar and 56 uh cent xrp in the long run if we this market can turn around and do what we are looking for it to do but in the short term, you know, we're kind of looking for those price points. Uh, what 50, we said 55 cent, then we was looking at 49 cent and we were really bearish at around 33 cent, right? Uh, yes, 
Yeah. So yeah, I remember. Yep. So yeah, that's our kind of uh, our um, sentiment, our view, our direction in the market. So we're going to get into this Q4 Ripple report. You know, the chart is actually printing out. I think it's going to be going down to that 50 of uh, five cent fairly soon. Is is printing out the pattern where we look for for uh, you know a sell. I think we might throw a sell in um today on a trade so um let's go over this q4 ripple report this was a lot a lot of good information i know uh mike seen some things he was very interested in all bridge and all these other uh companies narian oh excuse me narian so i'll let mike take over real quick indeed all right so Ripple published their quarterly XRP markets report to voluntarily provide transparency and regular updates on the company's views on the state of crypto markets, such as quarterly XRP sales, relevant XRP related announcements, and commentary on market developments over the previous quarter. As an XRP holder, Ripple believes proactive communication and transparency are part of being a responsible stakeholder. Moreover, Ripple urges others in the industry to build trust, foster open communication, and raise the bar industry-wide. So right here we have the market report um, for the entire crypto market, and they actually begin talking about the launch of the ProShares Bitcoin Strategy ETF. That began trading on October 19th and drew a record $1 billion in assets in just two days. And the it actually took the total market cap from two trillion to three trillion in just the span of a month. Um, however, we know that the growth of the crypto market as a whole was not sustainable uh, because of how volatile it was, and it did uh, fall, of course, as to where we are now. Yeah, we know this market is unsustainable because of people are hyping up these technologies that are unsustainable and not good for the environment. So, you know, Bitcoin drew a billion dollars in assets in just two days and pumped up the market cap from two trillion to three trillion. But these people quickly found out, hey, uh, it takes, um, you know, 30 minutes to send three dollars. Then I'm getting charged five cents to send three dollars and then or we're using ethereum or something like that you're getting charged five hundred dollars to move two hundred dollars you know that's the sustainable problems that we have with these other blockchains and this is why it leads a clear clear lane for iso 20022 uh compliant blockchains you know it seems like they're running on uh you know there's green law thing they're efficient and all this good stuff for the environment so yeah, you see why the market would return back to two trillion so fast. You know, uh, another good thing that happened in the fourth quarter was, uh, you know, the metaverse projects we're seeing on, on the XRPL, X Meta, you know, Equilibrium Games coming out, um, uh, Decentraland booming like crazy, Adidas acquiring some digital property and the Bored Apes um, project, and also in Decentraland, you know, so. You know, other blockchains have really got a lot of good things going on. But for the XRP ledger, we have the launch of the XLS 20D. This is an NFT devnet that allows uh, developers that want to come and test out the uh, network and how to deploy NFTs on the XRP ledger. It allows you to do that. So, you know, it's really, really cool. Right. And uh, Ripple's expecting with the launch of XLS 20D that we're finally going to see participants shift over to more efficient blockchains. That is the hope, and that is uh, most likely since people are tired of fees and, you know, con congested and unreliable networks. That's why we see uh, or we saw so many people shift to Solana, and, you know, now Solana has gone down for, what, the fourth time? So Man. I'm sure people are definitely looking for other options, and upon uh, – Upon the ledger being fully compatible uh, with NFTs, well, I think we'll definitely see a major shift. Yeah, and we've seen big companies like Sologenic, you know, go crazy with the airdrops. You, we've never seen this amount of airdrops in the XRP uh, ledger 
community and just history, it hasn't been this surge of adoption before. So, you know, shout out to companies and everyone who's doing airdrops for their communities. Sologenic dang near gave away a billion dollars in airdrops. So, you know, that's crazy. We're starting to see this interoper interoperability, excuse me. Uh, this is the biggest thing they say they have for the quarter. You know, we got the smart contracts coming as hooks. We got these uh, bridges that increased uh, in the span from 11.5 billion to 26.5 billion in the span of just three months because we are able to unlock the value from these different chains. You know, it's starting to become a environment where these networks are becoming interconnected. They all have certain different features and functions that they do uh, specifically for each niche. And, but they work together and communicate. We're seeing wrapped XRP for the first time uh, on the Ethereum blockchain uh, asset that is being backed one to one by XRP. So, you know, people on the Ethereum blockchain can experience XRP. It won't be how it is on the ledger, but they can also experience it. At least they can buy some XRP over there on Ethereum. But, you know, come over to, you know, the XRPL Zone wallet, you know, can't go wrong with that. And it's not financial advice. And Mike find something, uh, found something about Allbridge. So what is this, Mike? What's Allbridge? So Allbridge is a cross-chain bridge with more than 500 million in total value locked. Wow. Uh, the ledger, the XRP ledger is the 12th blockchain that they have added, which will now allow for seamless transfer of its native digital asset, XRP, across all of these blockchains that we have right here. Um, this is really cool because they actually have uh, a feature that I'll be mentioning in just a second that I'm really excited about. But let's go ahead and read what the quote was from the CEO of Allbridge. So he said that he's referring to the partnership with the ledger. And he says, this partnership offers us a unique opportunity to add the support of XRP Ledger, enabling millions of DeFi users to interact with the XRP ecosystem. Allbridge will provide the bridging solution to make it possible and ripple the technical support. Together, we contribute to growing cross-chain interoperability within the DeFi space. Yeah. And so, so uh, the, the tool that I was referring to is called the pathfinding functionality. This will allow assets to find an efficient path for a trade. For example, say you're looking to trade from Bitcoin into ETH on the XRP ledger DEX, and there is no ETH Bitcoin liquidity, but there are uh, ETH to USD and Bitcoin to USD, as well as Ethereum to XRP and Bitcoin to XRP. Pathfinding will execute the trade by finding the most efficient path within seconds via XRP or another bridge asset where liquidity is best. And since its inception, more than 200 billion has been traded on the XRP ledger's DEX. So this is really cool. Even whenever there's not an Ethereum Bitcoin currency pair, uh, they're going to be able to collect the liquidity necessary by getting it from multiple pairs, um, as you can see here. So that that's, that's very different, bro. That's that, to me, that's like almost tokenizing the pairs, the trading pairs, in a way, which I've never seen before. So if you if you really think about it, them grabbing liquidity from here. From here, from here, just imagine, you know, how we split up these tokens into point threes and point fours and point two right here and point zero zero one six. That is essentially how they're going to be grabbing this liquidity and bringing it to your front door and giving it straight to the user or the person who is needing that liquidity in that market. So my bad, Mike, for uh, popping in right there. No, all good. All good. And, uh... Yeah, so basically their mission is to make the blockchain world borderless and provide a tool to freely move assets between various blockchains. And I do believe that Allbridge is actually uh, backed by precious metals such as gold and silver. I do recall reading that. It's not included in this article, but you can definitely fact check me. Let us know down in the comments. All right, so back to the Ripple report. Uh, as we said, or as 
uh, fiction said there are multiple different projects that are mentioned here. Um, I was looking for Narian, but I'll just continue until we come across it. That's a little bit farther down. Uh, so right here, this is just the NFT spotlight, spotlighting the you know growth of the NFT marketplace. You know, spotlighting the XLS twenty D uh, on the DevNet. You know, and spotlighting uh, Solana. But one thing that sticks out in this uh, part right here it says, unfortunately, NFT scams across blockchains continue to be a concern. One, uh, well, this underscores the importance of due diligence which means research, as there are no whitelisted standards for NFT projects. One platform on XRP.com, which we've covered multiple times on this channel, has proposed a set of listing requirements for the NFT projects on their platforms. This includes know your customer and global ID verification. We also have a video on how to global uh, ID, get global ID verified so you can verify your person on the blockchain. It's time to get graded on the blockchain. Are you a good person on the blockchain? That's what global ID and all this stuff is for. We're going to, they're going to be grading you and I'm going to make, I'm going to make something. Yeah. Let, I'm not going to speak about that, but let's go back into that Q4 Ripper report, bro. Uh, Cause we see on XRP has these uh, partnerships, but um we will get to that in just a second. Um, right here, it says this is the state of global regulations. Uh, this talks about the, you know, the state of crypto and the SEC case versus Ripple, uh, the uh, Ripple case, uh, and you could say versus the XRP case as well. But it's right here, just kind of going over um, how, you know, Commissioner Hester Peirce expressed her disappointment over the absence of the crypto on, you know, Gary Gensler's regulatory agenda. You know, Gary's been on vacation the whole time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he's been at. He's not really saying too much, but also it goes over, you know, the partnerships um, with, that Ripple has made. You know, they've made huge partnerships in Dubai. Dubai's uh, establishing a World Trade Center that will come a uh, comprehensive free zone in regulatory free zone or not regulatory free zone but a regulated zone you know it's a lot of other things coming into play they want to be accepted by the treasury and all that good stuff mike they say ripple net in the year momentum could, uh, could you read that for us yes sir 2021 was ripple net's most successful and lucrative year to date as global momentum skyrocketed with customer demand despite the headwinds from the sec the number of transactions on RippleNet more than doubled with a payment volume run rate of over $10 billion. This is a testament to the product considering Ripple parted ways with MoneyGram, its largest customer, immediately after the SEC filed its lawsuit against Ripple. With over 20 payout markets for on-demand liquidity, most recently adding the Middle East, RippleNet continues to see more global demand for the product. Most notably, APAC continues to be one of the largest contributors of on-demand liquidity volume on RippleNet, more than doubling in 2021. So, yeah, if we go scroll down, it says, you know, we see the purchases of Ripple and their sales of XRP. I mean, a lot of money has been spent. We've seen the article uh, the other week or the other day, Brad Garland House coming out and saying, you know, Ripple, we got a billion in the bank. You know, we've been working over here, stacking up the funds, stacking up the XRP. Hey, that's what I like to hear. I'm glad I'm invested into XRP, but I want to get invested into Ripple, but I can't because I'm not an accredited investor, which is unfortunate. Um, I want to make a, uh, what, this is what I'm about to do. And I'm, a, I'm only throwing this out here so somebody else can do it so I don't have to. Uh, but if nobody does this, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to make something for people like me who want to invest in these companies because I don't mind potentially losing money. I know what I know what I'm doing. You know, we know what we're doing in this market. It's not hard to, like, understand the risk of investments. Uh, we kind of want to change um, what accredited investors are. We want to change investing. So we're going to make a, um, a platform where accredited investors can come on 
and tokenize their profile so that people can sell or buy and sell that tokenized version of that uh, portfolio, excuse me, because regular people need to be able to invest in, in companies like this. I mean, Ripple is selling shares for $11. I want some $11 X, I mean, Ripple, Ripple shares. So we need to start making prop platforms and programs and stuff like this on the blockchain. I'm really looking forward to that st type of stuff. They talk about the escrow right here, how, um, you know, oh, go sc scroll up real quick. I wanted to note this right before this thing. This was kind of scary. Go up just a little bit. So right here, uh, leases. It says leases. Certain wallets that are being used for XRP sales also provide short-term leases to the market makers. This is worth noting given that they are often incorrectly interpreted by market participants as sales. Leases are ultimately returned to Ripple. Total leases outstanding in Q4 were 2021 were 88 million XRP. Right now, I don't know if they're talking about the escrows or if they're talking about the actual XRP we're buying via third party. So what I'm going to start promoting is buying your XRP straight off the ledger if you can, because that is where, you know, XRP is being freely traded from. I, and I still don't know what the technical difficulties because Ripple didn't make XRP. XRP was called OpenCoin before it was called XRP. So are we even actually technically by law fully purchasing XRP? That's a great question to, um, you know, go into, but I won't go into that <laughs> right now. That's a little deep. We see the uh, XRP infrastructure updates. You know, the FCA has uh, a registered uh, crypto asset firm to launch support for XRP uh, by Digivault. This is the first fully UK financial conduct authority. You know, it fosters the growth for Digivault compliant and risk-focused custo uh, custodial wallets. Um, and it incorporates a high network in individuals, so a big network of people, companies, in addition to the Delta Exchange that became the first CFI exchange globally to launch XRP options. So it's a lot of stuff going on with XRP. You got XRP options. I wonder when we're going to see some XRP e e ETFs, all of this stuff, because it's happening overseas, but not in America. Did you already mention the uh, escrow? Yeah, I think we, uh, you know, we went over the escrow a little bit, uh, but you can, did you have something you want to know? I just wanted to mention that uh, 3 billion XRP was released out of escrow uh, this past quarter and that 2.4 billion was returned and subsequently put into new escrow contracts. Um, so they technically released uh, 0.6 after, uh, re you know, making new contracts for that 2.4. So, uh, or they're, no, they're, they're actually old. That's what they're old. So Ripple is, they're creating debt with companies and they know this is the thing. They creating debt with the asset that's brand new that they know they can track where they sending these things to. So these companies are obligated to pay back Ripple regardless of the fact. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what happened here, Mike, my bad. All good. Yeah. So we go down to, you know, building with the XRP community. And Mike, you can go ahead because I know you was very, very excited about the new stuff that's going on. Um, let's read that last little uh, paragraph and then we can go into the partnerships. All right. So uh, right here, as uh, Fiction said, this is specifically for the XRPL community. And this discusses the hackathon that took place recently as well as the grants that have been uh, given to multiple different projects. And so uh, right here we have winners from the hackathon and they will now be getting funded. We have a Nautilus wallet, which provides a digital asset wallet for the digitally excluded. So this is really cool. Imagine that I have a smartphone and Fiction doesn't, but he still has a digital wallet, right? He still, um, you know, maybe created that on a computer 
um, and he wants to access it. So I, since I have a smartphone, I can actually act as an intermediary and allow him to sign on to his account on my smartphone. And it won't be, uh, my phone won't take record of his keys or his passcodes or anything uh, of the such, you know, so I think that that is really cool. Um, it provides an opportunity for those that don't have smartphones and that they feel that they're excluded from the digital world. They can now um, tap in, if you will, through another person. And, and then we... And, uh, oh, my bad. No, you're good. Go ahead. Uh, we've seen a lot of good companies. I'm going to let you still explain that... Um, one thing, but one thing I wanted to note was it says last quarter there was a dramatic increase of activity on the network. A total of 130 million transactions on the XRP ledger with $113 billion transacted via 114 billion XRP in volume. This is huge. This is what people who've been here for three years four or five years since 2017, you know, me and Mike has been a part of this community for about, you know, a year, two years. We Well, I originally bought XRP, um, not knowing what it even was at 12 cents. So it's just really good to see this investment grow and all the new partnerships. But we see like things with Zerpcraft, um, you know, it's a lot of, like Mike said, grants going on on the, um, the ledger. Ripple has a 250 million grant program and then all these other good things uh, that Mike is going to go over it down below. Yes, sir. We're definitely going to um, definitely going to, you know, check out Zerpcraft and all of these projects right here. So we have XRPL hook library for assembly script, and that provides definitions for the XRPL hooks an API integration into a new assembly script project. So this is a great tool for developers. Um, and, you know, it has the API integration. Uh, we also have XRPL hooks Rust, which leverages Rust zero cost abstractions when writing XRPL hooks. And another one, uh, notably, that I think is really cool is called a state up. It's an XRPO powered digital will solution. So this is a solution for um, estates and wills. You know, you don't have to worry about keeping up with all those important papers and risk losing them or them being damaged. You know, this can all be done digitally now and it is verified and secured by the blockchain. Yeah. So we're going to go into some of these partnerships Uh that these companies that Ripple has shouted out like on XRP. Mike knows about this right here really well. Yes, sir. This is a great partnership that we have. So Simtrex is a multifaceted technology company pushing innovation in the realms of the Internet of Things, machine vision and artificial intelligence, as well as security and augmented and virtual reality. Uh, as such, the company is well equipped to further develop and support the on XRP ecosystem. So this partnership right he here is going to really help on XRP in scaling their company. They're going to onboard uh, 300 or over 300 designers and developers with many awards under their belt. Uh, and they would be the perfect, perfect company to partner up with. Um, so Simtrex has the, uh, you know, they have the, the uh, what was I going to say, <laughs> the Calvary, if you will. They're really going to help on XRP in scaling, um, which is really important because on XRP is taking on a lot. They already have their decks and they will be creating an NFT marketplace, which they say they plan to rival powerhouses like OpenSea. Immutable X or Rarible. Uh, so this was a quote. I just kind of dissected it. And this is from the CEO of On XRP, Kaj Le uh, Leroy. And I do want to read uh, the CEO of Simtrex, what his quote was. So he said that we love the vision of On XRP and the team couldn't be more excited to build on the XRP ledger to develop XRPL NFT supporting tech that strives to be the first of its kind on this blockchain. 
With increasing market adoption around crypto economies, the metaverse, blockchain, and NFTs are rapidly becoming the new internet. As a creative technology lab, CXR or Simtrex is designing and developing at the forefront of all these technologies and well-equipped to help organizations like OnXRP define the future of some of the biggest changes to the internet economy in the last 30 years. So Mike, I know we were looking at Simtrex. How much money are they managing right now? Uh, well, oh my goodness, they are the managing several different companies. Um, and I'm not exactly sure, uh, you know, what the market cap is for them. Um, I could definitely look that up, but I'm, I'm really pretty sure to- when we was looking it up last night, uh, it was somewhere around they were uh, holding around 560 billion. Uh, dollars in assets or something like that that was you remember actually, going over that last night we were looking at i just want to make sure can you hear me because my it said my internet connection was unstable uh, yeah hold on y'all good can, can you yeah, hear me can, yeah is my uh audio good oh yeah you are good bro okay. so yeah we were going over that night um right so right here it, it was nvidia and uh, one of the portfolio companies of Simtrex, MPS, or sorry, MP, or Masterpiece Studio Pro, they have partnered with NVIDIA and H- HTC Vive on a cloud-based platform to make 3D content creation more accessible than ever. So this partnership is actually very big. Uh, we know that NVIDIA is one of the um, leaders in the U.S. for technology, and they have a market cap of around five hundred billion. So, so who? So Simtrex partner with Nvidia, right? Okay, that is huge. And Simtrex is partnered with On XRP, and On XRP is partnered with XRP Junkies. So you see how that leads to a project. These projects. And that's why you need to follow these projects because you think it's just an NFT or something like that. And boom, you have a company that's supported by Boeing, Amazon, Walmart, all of these things. You got all this money, Johnson Controls, Schneider Electric. We actually do, uh, I got a mentor. My mentor does has a contract for Schneider Electric, has a contract for Boeing, has a contract for I don't see, uh, well, BSA, uh, BASF, we have contracts for all of these in the uh, U.S. Custom Border and Protection. We have contracts with those people. So, you know, it's really, really cool seeing this new metaverse technology coming to the XRP ledger powered by on XRP. So let's go back to that, um, you know, let's go back to those, uh, that article, that Q4 Ripper report. And, you know, we want to shout out to Narian. So click on Narian's page real, real quick, you know, shout out to Narian. This is a really, really good uh, project that we have went over. They're trying to tokenize data, uh, phone data for you all, where they are tokenized phone data. And what they're doing is making it safer, more secure, get paid for your own data. Please uh, go watch this video. It's not financial advice, but a little thing we have to say about the Narian token it's only 26 million of them. It's not going to be that many on the market. Ripple just shouted this company out. So this is a great time to buy. And we'll kind of be finishing this video off as it's, you know, getting a little lengthy. But, uh, you know, let's go back to that Q4 report. Let's see what else we have left, Mike. Yes, sir. And uh, in case you didn't say it, uh, Narian is a seamless private network that will consolidate all data available on the internet about a user to give them back total control. So that's definitely, uh, you know, a big mission and not something that comes lightly. It's not an easy mission, but nonetheless, a noble one, you know, giving back uh, what's rightfully ours, giving us back control of our data. Yeah, and right here we see stability issues on November the 13th. This was the first time that we ever experienced this on a ledger, but it was halted. It wasn't all the way halted, because I was still able to go through some transactions. It just took a little bit of time. But, you know, the ledger was uh, halted for 15 minutes. Uh, The validators was experiencing some issues. And, you know, the transactions went up. 
Um, this was because we didn't have enough validator nodes or we were running off the same validator node, the same network, all these coins and all this stuff. So now what has happened is we have been able to um, fix that issue by putting up more validator nodes, you know, and then we have been also able to bring awareness to the community. We have projects like XR Doge building full validator nodes for the community so they can just put it in their house and let it run. So, you know, it's a lot of good stuff. Going green with the XRPL, we know we are in accordance with those laws. And right here, we'll read that last one off. Let's read both of these last two paragraphs. I'll read the first one, Mike. It says, in December, Exchange announced it would develop a carbon credit solution for the XRPL, given its performance, scalability, and inherently green attributes. The XRP ledger was built with sustainability in mind and is one of the first major carbon neutral blockchains due to its federated consistency algorithm. The XRP ledger is significantly more energy efficient compared to proof of work blockchains and ensures low cost transactions. So even when the XRP ledger is down, it's still cheaper than any other blockchain that I've used. Solana, um, Ethereum, Bitcoin network, um, all that stuff that they tell you that you should be using when you should be using these. And we have the last thing they want to kick this off with, the global CBD momentum. Yes, sir. So Ripple joined the Digital Pound Foundation to focus on the development and implementation of a digital pound in the United Kingdom and continue to engage central banks globally on technical and policy uh, qu queries related to CBDCs. In addition, Ripple partnered with the Republic of, uh, I know I'm going to butcher Palu. this, Palu, to yep. explore developing strategies for cross-border payments in a USD-backed stablecoin directly on the XRP ledger. This could see the implementation of the world's first government-backed national stablecoin, leveraging the XRP ledger's built-in DEX and tokenization advantages. So we know the Digital Pound Foundation. Mike, click on that real quick. Let's show the viewers what this is. Do a new... Uh, so, you know, there the Digital found, uh, Pound Foundation is a non-for-profit focused on development and the implementation of the digital pound, a CBDC in the United Kingdom. So, you know, these are basically the big banks and all the big companies coming together saying, hey, we see a problem, we have a solution, let's work on it. They partner with Ripple to use this ledger to understand the technology and to also educate the masses about this technology because this is gonna define the future of money. This is gonna change the race for the global CBDCs. You know, this is gonna change a lot of that uh, problems where we see China, you know, being the leader. It's not a real, I don't believe China being the leader is a problem because I actually believe everybody is in accordance with each other. So, you know, we see this new thing coming and how these companies are just coming together on, with Ripple and on this ledger. So don't sleep on it. Oh, and right here, the hackathon. So they have all the good articles. We're about to read into this XRPL hooks in the S state up. You know, if anybody is out here and they heard that idea, you're free to take it before I make it. So the reason we thought of that idea with the um, accredited investors is because, you know, we are young. We want to invest in these things, but we're not accredited. So we need to make solutions, but you know, we're going to wrap this video up. I appreciate you, Mike, for coming on the show today. Like you do all the time. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. Uh, I guess the last thing I wanted to throw in there was Zerpcraft was mentioned and oh, yeah. they, they actually did get uh, a grant from the uh, ripple X team. So um, this is really cool. You know, they're going to be working on uh, partnering up with Minecraft and actually, um, you know, making non-fungible tokens from the uh, in-game items. So I don't know if they're partnering up. I didn't read that. If you did that, that's going to be great, great, great. That's going to be huge, actually. But what they're doing is making a Minecraft-based 
uh, game because you can take the Minecraft, um, you know, world. That's just like a code you can copy and you can put your own uh, things in there. You can plug in whatever you want to do. See, you see it's called the Zerf, Zerf Craft plugin. So it's just a plugin to, a, 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 I think it's a plugin to API. I'm just getting into coding and everything. So, you know, I'm learning that stuff. But like I said, you know, watch out for them XRP charts. Uh, they are here, you know, price is looking like we said, it's been dropping, it's been dropping. So it's testing that liquidity to the bottom side. Watch out for that. But it's Fiction Crypto. And Michael Lee XRP. Thanks guys for tuning in. Peace.